What I wanted to talk to you tonight is uh, we all work with new technologies. I have been for 25 years since I left here. But I want to talk about the oldest, which I've also worked with. And I'll tell you a remarkable story and show you that in the very beginning, human intelligence was as great as it is now, and that people were capable of designing symbolic systems which they could play around with and develop, like Unix or anything like that. Uh, and I'll show you how it works. I don't have a lot of time. Okay, some of you will recognize this. It's been in the paper. This is the oldest human artwork. It's 75,000 years old. It was found in a cave in South Africa. And the question is, what are those strange rooms? They look like hourglass figures. Scholars are puzzled, and I was more puzzled, and I'll tell you why. Because in 1958, someone figured out what they were, and this work has been ignored. And here is that man. His name is Carl Schuster. He's an American art historian. He spoke 30 languages. He was good at ciphers and codes. He worked for the OSS during the Second World War. But he studied traditional symbolism. He died young, and his work was completed by the anthropologist Edmund Carpenter, who taught in this program. <coughs> Here's the books that he put out, privately printed, at great cost, and distributed free of charge to libraries and scholars. And here is the mass market version, which unfortunately is now out of print. Okay, how does this thing work? Uh, basically, it's a system of graphic communication dating from Paleolithic times that expressed some of the fundamental concerns of humans. A system for illustrating their ideas about genealogy. I don't mean kinship. I don't mean that's my brother and that's my aunt. It's an abstract system. Uh, the resulting designs they created were decorated, put on everything, their bodies, and tools and everything. And that's what we find on cave walls a lot. Uh, it's a kind of primitive heraldry. It's a little like a military insignia because you could read them and tell what tribe and the group the person was from. And the function was to clothe the individual and their own ancestry. Uh, women probably created this system and carried it on since they did the clothing design and the tattooing. Here are the basic units. They're little humanoid figures. They're meant to represent ancestors. You're going to see the heads are going to come off. And when the heads come off, you get what is called geometric art. And it's not geometric, it's figurative. We didn't realize that. Okay, here's how you depict descent. The ancestors above, and the person literally grows out of them. This is the notion of people growing out of each other like trees. Like you could cut a plant and regrow it. And so you start to get these complex forms. Relation is depicted by linking them side by side, your mother's side and your father's side. Okay, here's, there are just thousands of examples. I'm just going to give you a couple. This is a Melanesian war club. Here you see both systems working together. That's the basic unit. Now here the heads are left. And the important thing here is that the head of the, upper, of the lower figure Peers between the joints of the upper figure. That's an idea that's really developed later in the notion that people are born from the knee of their father. That's a strange idea, but that's why they believe it's like a plant. Here's a textile from the Selbies. Again, same thing without, it's a little harder to see. It just looks like an abstract pattern, but it's not. It's the same system. And this is literally the social fabric. Literally the social fabric. That's not. A fortuitous expression, that's really what they believed. These are only ancestors. This is what you can do with it abstractly, put it around things. You see, once the head goes off, then you get abstract, what look like abstract patterns, they're not abstract. Body tattoos all over the world, you find these different kinds. I can't show you all the variations. These things you see on cable walls, you stack them up. That's a totem pole. Each generation goes back to the first one. You can make a ladder out of that. You can climb the ladder to get to heaven. So it's tied into the cosmology. Uh, each, you can use it as a mnemonic device. Each notch is a generation. You can count them and remember them. More. These are on cable walls in Spain all over. Those are much later in the Neolithic, but you see the form is preserved. That's a Hopi. They're, they're from all over the world. Stacked ancestors. Okay, how did this all come about? From the creation of, of these small robes. You know, you watch the caveman movies, they're wearing these big robes. 
These small furs, uh, I'll show you them in a moment, they are sewn together by women in the most ingenious way to save fabric. And because of that, we don't have any examples of Paleolithic times, but the techniques survive. And here they are. <laughs> and they look like those figures. You see, see how clever they are? They cut them in half to make a square, and then they put the squares together. They waste nothing. And of course, you have the notion that you're related to the animals that are made it up, making them this up. Last one, Australian robe. Here you have different patterns within a robe. And these are uh, different groups within the society. That's it, folks.